man, we back like smooth jazz with my boy Chad. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? I'm doing well. That was actually, you know, compared to your other intros, that was better. I, I like that one quite a bit. But no, speaking of other things that I like quite a bit, um, Mr. Surratt, Chaz, right? Uh, linebacker, in North Carolina. I think that he was a very surprising player on film. But what might be even more surprising than the grade was the path to the grade, right? Um, kind of an interesting story here, as you can see a little bit off of his just general statistics. Um, first two years at North Carolina, he was a QB. Started seven games that first year as a redshirt freshman. After the season, was faced with a suspension for selling team-issued sneakers, was out for four games, came back, was in that one game he was back, four for ten, for ten yards with three interceptions, so a uh, highly questionable performance, breaks his wrist or injures his wrist in some capacity, has to have season-ending surgery, comes back that next spring, and he and his coach come to an agreement that he should be a linebacker. He was on to be a ACC Defensive Player of the Year candidate really those next two years, and ultimately now, at least in our opinions, in the day one, day two discussion at least, right? Um, so Mike, the transition from QB to linebacker. It's an interesting one, not one that you see very often. What are your thoughts on it? I know I feel like it gives players a different perspective, right? Uh, particularly when it comes to coverage, you know, you can kind of see things that maybe you were seeing from the other side of the field uh, previously. But do you think it's a positive or do you have question marks because it is really only a second year playing that position? I think it's a positive. I think what shows from it, IQ, awareness, and I think pass coverage, as you said, I think in zone coverage, playing that, that, that middle zone, I think he did a great job. Might be one of the better ones we've seen so far. Um, and then where my concerns with a band is just pure strength, you know, playing, you know, with it, with, within the hashes, playing in the trenches. And I think he actually did a really good job. And, and we'll disagree on this a little bit. Um, and you might want to hey, just go right into the grade, to be honest, because I think somewhere I saw some, some real confidence was actually block shedding. I think his ability to take on blocks, um, make plays, make running backs, make decisions maybe they didn't want to make. Um, I think he actually did pretty proficiently, even better than sometimes Micah and Owosu in, in some films I watched. Um, so I think that's one thing that really stuck out to me, um, which would have been my concern with him playing quarterback um, is maybe not having that ability. Um, but I think he actually showed pretty well. No, nothing crazy, not to necessarily the level maybe of Zayvon Collins, but better than some of the linebackers you've already seen. And um, with him only playing the position two years, um, that might be able to improve a little bit. No, most certainly. And, you know, in terms of that block shedding, I know it was interesting, right? Because after the fact, I look, I'm looking up his pro day numbers, did 25 reps on bench as pro day, which is phenomenal for a linebacker. You'd think with a QB, he would be towards the lower end, end of the spectrum. He's in the top 95% uh, just with that number alone. Otherwise, uh, ran a 4.640, a 4.19 shuttle, a 7.02 three cone, and a 31 inch vertical, which uh, that number had some people like, a little bit curious. We've seen some 300 pound defensive tackles with a higher vertical than that, but the other numbers uh, were certainly were certainly good. I know for me, at least in terms of block shedding, and a couple of these numbers, in all honesty, is when I'm looking at those four games, one of the games, the Virginia Tech game in particular, was horrendous I would say I it was like fifth round quality film the other three were very high level close to the top of the second round type film right um so how do I balance that I, I feel like it's tough for me to say oh he has great block shedding when I have to spend uh 60 minutes watching him get eaten up by Virginia Tech by example despite the fact that he had uh you know done a pretty solid job in other games I know for me I did think it came down maybe a little bit less to the technique than it was uh just due to the fact that he was sometimes coming in there like a missile and he was more so just shocking guys opposed to actually you know stacking and shedding them um but I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if you did bump that up a little bit higher I just know for me having watched that that one game that Mike hadn't um, a little bit questionable, in my opinion. He was virtually a non-factor in that entire game, but otherwise was very solid. I think just kind of going down the sheet in terms of his range and pursuit, um, maybe again, not quite up to the caliber of Parsons and Owusu, but uh, very freaking good, right? Uh, we're talking about a guy who has the long speed, um, maybe not the 4-3, 4-4 long speed, but enough long speed to be making plays on uh, tosses, powers, anything to the outsides in either direction. In terms of his coverage skills, like we already said, I thought he was very proficient there. Um, outside of Owusu, so far the second best that I've seen. I just felt like his instincts for uh, being able to not only 
watch the quarterback's eyes and read where the quarterback was looking, but also sort of have one eye there as well as one eye looking around to see uh, who was potentially entering and exiting his zones. I thought he did a very good job there. And uh, I mean, if he can just continue to improve, like Mike said, with more reps of the position, I think we could be looking at a very scary player in that regard. Otherwise, IQ and awareness, sort of the same thing. I felt like for being only a second year, it was certainly a positive, right? Um, occasionally, he would get caught up a little bit against the run uh, in terms of just reading what gap stuff was going to. But in the past, I felt like he was uh, very, very solid. Quickness and change of direction. The quickness was certainly there. I would say the change of direction was sometimes a little bit questionable uh, as well. But I guess that kind of comes with the fact that, uh, you know, maybe stepping up in the pocket doesn't prepare you for uh, making plays and cutting out a dime to go make a play outside the sea gap, by example. Um, but I thought he was solid still, just maybe not again to the caliber of some of those top guys. Otherwise, motor was very good. Very rarely quit on plays. Uh, definitely wasn't content being blocked. You know, that was one thing that we've seen and we'll see with a couple of these linebackers where, you know, once an O-lineman gets hands on, they're just not going to do anything. Um, Chaz, he was always fighting, right? And maybe that does go to uh, some of Mike's block shed grade. As he said, for me, I think more of it was a little bit of motor where uh, some O-lineman, now they think the ball's passed, they're quitting on the play. Whereas Chaz, he's still going uh, as hard as he possibly can. I felt like that was very positive. Overall, uh, size, I felt, I felt like a 3.5, he was six foot 229. So uh, a little bit on the shorter side, a little bit on the lighter side, but for his game, he certainly does play a little bit bigger than that, which is why I gave him a three and a half. And then overall general athleticism, I felt like he was a four, very solid. Again, just not quite up to that uh, caliber of the top guys. And with that being said, 75.5, you put that on the big board and that had some sort of smack dab in the middle of my second round. So Mike, uh, you said you might be a little bit higher. Where would you put him on this big board? Obviously, we've already said he's past the Nick Bolton. He's past the Dylan Moses. But how high are you talking here? Yeah, I probably got him, you know, right between Rochelle and Perkins. I think that's where my my final grade would end up for him. I think he kind of has that ability. Some things I saw, just little technicalities I just saw. It just impressed me that I don't know, sure, you know, like Ronnie Perkins really offered at the edge position. Um, Something that sounds real stupid, but uh, from the linebacker spot, I think, out of all the linebackers I've seen, or either the defensive players I've seen, this man took the best pursuit angles I've ever seen in my life. Every time he went, someone was, you know, a running back was coming out, you know, along the sidelines. I, I think he just took a great angle towards it. And it just shows his IQ awareness. And I think you can work with that. I think some of the other stuff will come. I think there's a concern with finish and tackling. I mean, definitely had a couple of missed tackles, but I just think that offers a lot of that linebacker position. It's something any team could use. Um, so I really do think probably between R Perkins and Rousseau, I think is where I'd have them. Uh, I'm going to take Rousseau's just overall ceiling. I think there's a lot there just with size, um, his playmaking ability and, um, just some of the raw athleticism you see there, but, um, over guy like Perkins, I'd probably take Chaz, especially if that's, you know, what team need. So. No, it's definitely interesting, right? And I wouldn't go quite as far to say that he had the best pursuit angles I've ever seen. I believe you were speaking a little bit in hyperbole there, but regardless, I still, um, I thought they were solid, right? I thought they were good pursuit angles for a guy playing the position for the second year in his life. But um, no, I would say a little bit lower than that, obviously. I do agree though, that he does have certainly a, a higher ceiling than maybe some of those next couple guys there. I think that just the fact that again, only his second year playing the position, given the, the level that he's already played it at, uh, you know that he's had to attack that film room, that practice field, that weight room with a ton of intensity, right? And if he continues to do those things at the next level, I most certainly think he could uh, develop, maybe not into one of the best linebackers in the league, but I think he could certainly be uh, in that next tier there uh, in, in terms of just his general play making ability, his coverage ability, everything was very solid uh, with Chez. So, I did want to ask Mike, we've kind of been doing this with all the linebackers so far. Where do you think he fits best? Is he, in your opinion, just a flat Mike, given that sort of IQ and awareness that we saw? Or would you prefer him as a sort of a Will or Sam or potentially a three, four outside linebacker? I highly doubt that you would say that. But um, where are you sort of in that discussion? I think if you want to get the best out of his abilities, I think it's at the Mike position, but I think he has the ability to play well. Um, I think he um, shows enough just, you know, range and athleticism to play the will position to make plays. Um, but I think really where he fits best is at the Mike linebacker. Um, I think, you know, being the play car caller for your defense, I think he has the, and it comes with the IQ ability to put players in the right positions. Um, seeing that from, you know, the quarterback position, I think he really shows it on film. And I think 
um, that Mike linebacker spots really where he belongs. No, I mean, they say that linebacker is the quarterback of the defense, right? Well, he is legitimately a quarterback on defense. So he does certainly have a ton of potential. He'll be a fun guy to see where he goes. And, you know, maybe if you're coming back to this video in a couple of weeks after your team drafted him, we'd love to hear in the comment section down below uh, just what your thoughts on him are. Did you uh, potentially get a steal in the third round, right? Or did a team draft him in the middle of the second round? Obviously, I think that they certainly could. Mike thinks a little bit higher. But, man, if you could get him in the third or fourth, uh, just by example, PFF, they had him ranked, I believe it was 89th. Uh, if you can get him 89th, you are getting an absolute steal, in my opinion, out of uh, Chaz Surratt. But no, with that being said, obviously, make sure you also leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. We're on the road to 100 subs, uh, just inching closer day by day. So with that being said, Mike. I think we mic'd up and we mic'd it out. Peace, guys. Yeah.